as is my name here promised you guys that I would record a lot of videos recently but I never got a chance to as it's summertime and uh, a lot going on with my life at the moment so I'm sorry for any disappointments but uh, I am back I'll be back and not back now but I will be back very shortly uh, today uh, I wanted to show you guys on how to make a jar client for a 317562 RSPS basically 317 but you know graphics of 58562 and the graphics, by the way, are in, in the client here. That's in the cache. So it's pretty much we can call it 317 uh, client. As you guys know, there was already uh, a video on how to make jars, but it got pretty old. It was in bad quality, so I thought I should make one in HD for you guys. Plus, I got a lot of requests on um, YouTube, and I got a lot of emails at, or people asking me to, uh, literally begging me to make a jar, how to uh, make a video on how to make a jar client. So here it is files you are going to need is a jar marker a jar marker is just a, an application from Java that you can turn a client if you have the client files into compresses it into uh, a jar client a desktop client whatever you would like to call it so for uh, the link for the jar mark jar maker I will have it uh, put down there by the description mark and there's two types of client here that I'll show you guys how to make jar from. Some people say that um, jar uh, one client is different, the other client looks like this, the other client's Java files and you know class files are in a different uh, folder and whatnot. So I bought two types of clients here today to show you guys. There's actually no difference. Doesn't really matter. It's just a client, a client to client. So let's have this one open first of all. So today he will be saying right now is just the normal client, it's 317 client with the Java files and the class files are located in one folder and just uh, you know one destination I mean and sign you go to sign folders just another class file the Java file and the bat file you go to this here and it should be Java files and it should be you know, sign file here too sign link again so what I'm have you guys do today is First thing you need to do: open your client up, look if there is uh, if everything's okay, and look make sure that there is no .txt files or anything like that through. Browse through nicely and see if there's any uh, additional files that you can have to delete. Okay, well there is nothing. All right, so first thing you want to do is hit the search bar up, search bar up here, and type .java. And what you're gonna do is locate all all the .java files and delete them. Yeah, that is exactly what I said. Delete them. Delete all the Java files. So like here right now, all these Java files. The Java, delete. But before you do this, make sure you make a copy of the client. So if anything happens, you guys do not lose it, alright? And, you know, mess up. In case you mess up so you don't lose all your files. Alright, then... Next thing, next process here we're gonna do is take another look and see if there's any .java files left. Nope. Nope. Next thing here is we're gonna delete all the .batch files. .bat. Bat. Dot basically bat is a shortcut for uh, batch. So we're gonna delete all the .batch or batch files, whatever you guys wanna call it. Compile, run, everything. You don't need it anymore. In order to make a jar, it compresses everything to one time, so we can just double click on it. You don't need any more uh, compiler or uh, client or anything like that. Right. So you got only class files here, and you got that that file. Leave that, leave this that that file there. With the sign, and this this. But another that file, and another sign, and this class. So what you want to do is open jar maker. Either you open the bat or the dot jar doesn't make a difference. I'm just gonna go ahead and open the, the bat file. Alright, we're going to minimize, minimize that. Alright, this is <coughs> output directory. Output directory is basically the destination of the jar. Once you finish jarring a client, where do you want it to be, you know, located? Where do you want to put it as? So usually, I would hit, I would go up here and look for desktop. Your desktop. So just, once it's done, I will extract the desktop. Second, use an output jar file. You want to rename your jar, for example. This is a test. Or, for example, you can put anything you want here. Let's just 
put um, test dot jar. Make sure you put the dot jar at the end of the name, you, whatever name that you put. Input directory is where the client files are located. So let me move this aside for a second. So my client files are here, right? Meaning you can client. So what I'm gonna do, and this is on my desktop, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this button right here. Hit this button right here. Go to desktop. And here it is, immunity equal client. I'm gonna go ahead and look at immunity equal client. Just you don't need to open the folder, just spot the folder, click on it once, and then hit OK. After that, you're gonna want to hit advanced options. Make sure this is times.db and then close that. Then hit manifest template. Main class. It's gonna ask for main class. Now the main class is what launches it what launches the client so you're gonna have to put this very precisely but client without any capitals just client and then press set manifest once you hit that you can either uncheck this or keep it checked this will generate a batch file for you but I would rather not if I were you I'll just create a jar without the batch file so hit create jar and then says are you sure jar file will be created at C users manually desktop test the jar okay yes so it'll take a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds usually. And you're gonna go ahead and not close this yet, just minimize it. Test that jar is right over here. What you want to do is go ahead and double click on it and give it a second or two to load up. Alright, here we go. Starting up. There you go. So here's on how to make a jar client. This is how to make a jar client. Now folks, there is one more thing that I gotta warn you guys about. Let me go ahead and minimize this. Open up the client folder again. Make sure you spot. You know how I said set manifest uh, when we we're going through. Uh, let me pop that up for you guys, just in case you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Here, manifest template. Set manifest. When I put this client here, make sure the capital. Sometimes the cap, uh, the C has to be capital or non-capital. So how do you find out if it's capital or not? Search through here for client that client that class. See the client, the class, the C is not capital, so you don't have to put a capital C. But if the C is capital, then you, in the client files, then you gotta put it, put the C here as capital, capital C. So, all right, anyways, that's how to make a jar file. And one more thing I'll be showing you guys is the second client I was talking to you guys about. It looks different, obviously. There's a compiler to play, and then there's another folder that's just flow. Should be class and Java files. Class and Java files are located here. File searcher. This you're gonna go ahead and get rid of this immediately. Same same uh, situation here. Hit that Java. Find out, look at all the Java files, delete them, and every dot batch file, like I said. So you're gonna go ahead and delete this. And then you're gonna go ahead and type dot batch, dot bat. Oh, even dot text files. If there's any dot text files, you're gonna go ahead and delete those too. So once more, then just do another check for dot txt. No more text files. All right. We'll go back to the other previous folder. Delete these two batch files. Or better yet, just copy paste this onto your desktop. Close that once everything's done. So the name is Flow. Test that jar was here. All right. All what you guys want to do? All right. This loaded. All right. This is loaded. Just let you guys know. Here it is. Client does work. All right. Let me go ahead and uh, pop that close. And then do the same thing here. Go for uh, look at this on your desktop. Put the name as test to that jar, and I'm gonna go look at the client, which is gonna be on my desktop, and it's gonna be named flow. So the folder, and then um, go advanced options. Make sure it's times the DB. All right, very good. Close. The manifest template. Then here again, you put client and set manifest. So it's client set manifest, and then whether you created or not created batch file doesn't matter. I would not, to be honest. Then press create jar. Alright, jar should be created. Let's go ahead back. Oh no, wait, I'm not gonna close it just yet. Let's go look at my jar file. Where's my jar file? For some reason, it didn't extract to my desktop. That's very, very odd. I think it's because the name is the same thing. Well, I'm gonna change the name here and put it uh, testing.jar. I will. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a. Oh no, I shouldn't have done that. Just put it right here. And now we're going to create jar. Alright, go memorize this. Alright, here it is. Appeared in my desktop. 
It seems that I by accident put the location wrong up here. Right, so hold on and open testing that jar. Probably won't have the cache for this, or will I? If you guys, one more thing you guys should know: if you do not have the cache, this is what's gonna happen: er, connection error, or it would say something like uh, er, error contact staff. As that's if you don't have the cache. But as for this one, when I do have the cache, you won't have any problems with it. As you can see, you just double click, it will open up for you. Because you have the cache. So the only reason I made the other client was to show you guys that that's what happens if you don't have a cache for the client, which will be usually comes with every sourcing client. Anyways, guys, that's how to make a jar client. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you liked it. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Thank you.